The Legend of Genji ended with a bang. If you want to know what I'm talking about, wait till the end. But with this episode, we don't go right into where we left off last time. But we start off with Aiko, who is a character we met in part three. She's just minding her own business, chilling, having a good time, ditching the party that her mom told her to get ready to go to. And her mom had to send somebody to explain to her that she's late and she needs to go. So she does go, even though she doesn't want to. And what she does is she goes, but in her mom's eyes, the worst way possible. She dresses exactly opposite opposite of what her mom suggested and made her mom extremely mad. She had these high heels to make herself look taller than the avatar on purpose and it was a really funny scene honestly. Besides that, not really too much goes on in this scene early on. They just kind of have banter and conversations regarding Omashu and the situation there with all these protests that are discussed which were talked about in part two on the news at the end. Honestly, it's kind of sad to see that Omashu is not in a good spot in this story because it was such a fun location in the original series. We also see Luan's peacock cat in full action. I thought it was a beautiful design for the cat. It looks really nice, cute, and fun. And honestly, I didn't think these animals existed until now. So really nice addition to this world. But eventually we get to Luan meeting Aiko and they just have nice conversations and they actually have to take pictures together. They kind of get to know each other. Aiko knows a lot about him and that just sets them up as a great pair in Team Avatar. But after that, we kind of go into where we left off in the last episode. And you see this gang, the Red Sands, take off his mask and they see that, oh, he's just a kid. So they let him go but they basically say do not say a word about this so he runs off he gets back home his mom is not happy because there's this curfew he could have gotten in trouble especially because he's a sandbender and they just get into this argument and after this you hear a boom and you see it in the background it's purple after that their home is completely on fire and they have to escape they have to get out of there that's where it ends that's the end of chapter one and now you see what i'm talking about when i said it ended with a bang it literally ended with a bang these are not all mini episodes these are parts contributing to a single episode. Honestly, if I'm being completely honest, this is probably my least favorite part or my second to least favorite part only because it felt like we were going to get more. The payoff was there. We were told about this big party that Luan was going to be at. That was paid off. Everything that was set up in part four was paid off. We had theories of what that could be. And honestly, the theory of it being like a miniaturized version of Kuvira's spirit beam. Honestly, that did come true sort of. I like what they set up and I like the execution. But at the end of the day, I do feel like this was lacking a little bit, this part. And I feel like it's a good part, but it's just a little too short and in my opinion for episode two rather than split it up into parts or at least this format i think they should either do a full drop of an entire episode or maybe only drop maybe three parts two parts at the most so that way we're not waiting for these little parts i feel like we should have gotten a little bit more here and that's really my only con at this moment we don't know when we're going to be getting more legend of genji content episode two there's no announcement whatsoever and as soon as we get an update i will be making a video going over the information and if you guys want to see my other legend of genji videos if you haven't yet you're gonna want to check those out right here